Uh, this is going to be just a little bit of fun, because uh, who doesn't like a top N list? Um, these are kind of my my programming languages that right now I like and my right now current thoughts. Um, this, of course, you know, changes, evolves. You know, what tools you want to use will always change. So let's get started with fifth on the list, Java. It is kind of the big heavyweight business, other, do anything language. Incredibly valuable to know um, for a number of reasons because everything can utilize it. Or, you know, it's, it's ubiquitous. Um, any business will use it. Um, so many things, web servers, application servers, um, applications, a lot of the, the quote, the big data, the Hadoop stuff relies on it critically. It solves some, some problems that exist, and some of the technologies around Java solve some problems. Connect to a database, JDBC. Every database now has a JDBC driver. Uh, so you'd get that you know, independent connection uh, capabilities. Some, like Oracle, aren't quite as, uh, as good as others. Their drivers aren't quite as good. But Java, excellent, incredibly handy. It is a verbose language. You have to actually spend a lot of time writing code to, to get to useful output. Um, so that's a, its drawback, but it is also very structured um, and well-typed. Um, so pretty good. Four. This one's probably a surprise to a lot of people, Fortran. This is one I actually use um, from time to time, even in the modern day. Uh, it excels at dealing with matrices, uh, math, you want to set numerical precision, um, so you're not you're not stuck with say the C types, you know, longs and doubles. No, you get real number types. You get uh, precision. You can set uh, matrix handling capabilities that are great. Formula translator. Um, one of the things I haven't moved in. I typically use the Fortran 90 spec. Um, I really should brush up a little bit more on the 2003 spec because they made a lot of good changes that make it. Easier to use um, and more functional, but even at the Fortran 90, even 77, for what you would use it for, there's nothing better. You want to do some math? Use Fortran. It'll be as fast or faster than C. It solves some problems around uh, mathematics, what you'd be using it for, and it'll be easier to write. It'll be easier to code what you want to code with this if you use Fortran than if you use something like C. And it'll be faster than doing it in anything else, um, you know, other than maybe C, but you'll spend less time coding it in Fortran. So Fortran. R, number three, R. Um, open source language kind of based on S. Um, and this is another one. You can tell I, I probably spent a lot of my time doing uh, mathy type things. Um, R is really good. Again, it's not going to be as fast as doing Fortran and compiling natively, although a lot of R actually is in, in Fortran, a lot of the modules. But it's great. It's got package management built in to bring in libraries. Uh, has so many uh, machine learning algorithms, visualizations. Um, so this is really not a general purpose programming language. This is more of an analytics uh, and data exploration and statistics language. Highly recommend it. It's it's a little goofy. It's gotten a little less goofy, so you can now use an equal as an assignment operator rather than an arrow, which was one of my big gripes um, from some time ago. This is kind of the daddy. Um, C is w the essential language. Um, it comes in here at number two on my list. I don't do a whole lot of uh, work in C other than maybe looking at some stuff, open source stuff. I don't actually code a lot in C anymore outside of the embedded realm. So doing some stuff in microcontrollers, use C. Um, doing some stuff with historical computing, you know, C was uh, available on all the old uh, Unices. I've been playing around with it a little bit on VMS. Um, it really is, <laughs> it's only one step removed from a, a good macro assembler. Um, and so it, it has some great capabilities, but it also has a million ways to shoot yourself in the foot. Um, 
but if you can master C, you know, pretty good chance you can uh, you can tackle anything else. And the C syntax, I guess, where that come from? Uh, I can't think of the name that it was derived from. But the C syntax is ubiquitous. So Java C syntax, Perl C syntax. Um, that's where you have something earlier we talked about Fortran, which is you know it's it's white space dependent. That's my big gripe with it. Um, you know it's positional. Uh, but yeah, curly braces to denote a block is it makes sense. And so people who who you know you you can go take C and apply these concepts elsewhere. Things like data types. A lot of modern uh, languages base what they have on C. So take a take a break now and talk about the kind of honorable mentions, um, which I would say I'll just say three honorable mentions. Fourth doesn't get much love anymore. Stack based, really cool. Um, if you're on an old Spark station, you have Open Boot Prom. That's fourth, right? So you can actually actually run some fourth code. Um, it just isn't as common today. And I, I can't really blame people. It's you know, I couldn't think of a good application for it uh, right now. As some problems it would solve, but you could run whole, you know, use it as an imperative language, an operating system. Uh, other one is Basic. Uh, again, doesn't get a whole lot of love, but was actually really important. I mean, people wrote real software in Basic. People don't really do that anymore. But you need to do some computations, little interactive systems. Uh, actually. Um, used and uh, playing around with VMS recently, you notice, hey, HP ships a basic. Uh, I think that's pretty, pretty nifty. Obviously, in the home computer world, the Commodore, I mean, that was kind of your your shell was a a, a basic uh, interpreter. Uh, so you had a, you know uh, imperative and uh, er, sorry immediate mode, um, as well as being able to to store programs. The other one would be Lisp. Um, just uh, on the list, just do all, all the parentheses, so it, it has to have a place there. Well, let's go to the number one, Perl. Um, this is what I do most actual work in. Um, it excels at string handling, but it's not limited to that. Uh, you can extend it, and it has been extended in so many ways, and it is so flexible from the very smallest of one-liners all the way up to full-fledged applications. Yet when you get something really large, there are a couple of drawbacks to Perl, mainly due to library search path, and it's got to include a lot of stuff and pre-build it, so you may have a little bit of startup delay. But it really is the, the do-anything. I think it was quoted once um, that, you know, it makes, you know, easy things dead simple and it makes impossible things possible um, as a language. It has kind of a C syntax to it um, and, and a lot of shortcuts and that's one of the uh, one of the perceived negatives from some people who aren't as familiar with it is because just like C language especially if you're not on a you know, protected system it, having to do your own memory management means there's a, a lot of ways to shoot yourself in the foot with Perl, there are a ton of ways to shoot yourself in the foot in a different way. Uh, and because there are so many shortcuts, you can make an unreadable mess. So it requires some discipline. And I know people get really proud of like, oh, here's my ridiculous unreadable thing. People use the regular expression parser and pervert it to do things where a conditional would work better uh, and be more readable. So it does have a lot of opportunity for misuse. Uh, and that's fine if if you're doing something that no one else has to look at. Yeah, go ahead and make it as unreadable as possible. But there's no reason you can't write readable code in Perl. It's just unlike Python, it doesn't force you into a a strict structure. But the lack of structure means you get a lot more power, uh, and you also get a lot of performance. Um, now machines with su such large memory, you don't have those same constraints. So the you know, Perl trades memory for performance, so it, it eats up a lot of memory for what it does, but now that memory is cheap enough, eh, not a big impact. So, number one, Perl uh, is the winner. Like I said, quick video, top five.